And let us, our eyes and our hearts and our minds be under unto the understanding of your word yeah. as you preach us to us this morning. Amen. And we'll give you thanks and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated this morning. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Amen. I don't think we do anything that uses our hands more or that we commit to more than being a mother. A mother is a wonderful thing. Yes. Amen. Especially if she loves the Lord. Amen. It's all about working with what? Amen. Our hands. Yes. You know, faith without works is dead. Right. But when we lift up holy hands unto him, it becomes a love offering to the Lord. Amen. Uh, would you put up the, uh, I only have one picture, I think, picture. for today. Do you have yeah, it? One slide. Yeah. Huh? One slide. If you have it, great. If you don't, I'll live. Right. I want to talk to you about a mother's oil. All right. Amen. A mother's oil and a mother's hand. I have never preached to you what I'm going to preach this morning. And you're going to say, oh, Sister Twilight, you've taken that text many times. I found something. And to me, it was so exciting. I told you, I love those little tidbits in the Word as we study. And what I'm going to take you to, that Dorcas was also another woman in the Word of God. And she was a good worker. Come on. And when she made clothing for everyone, and you know, I'm no seamstress. I never claimed to be. But they brought, when she passed away, they brought all of their coats and the things that she had made them, crying how wonderful she was. My friend today, mothers are wonderful. Yeah, they are. And if you look at your mother, I think I know some, most of them, I think. I don't know Ina's mother. Maybe. Yes, you do. I do? Okay. <laughs> I don't remember. Forgive me. Um, but what's important here that I want to take you through, and you'll understand when I'm done. If we could go over to 2 Kings chapter 4 in your Bibles this morning, we're going to pick up 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Now there cried a certain woman, of the wives and the sons of the prophets. I'm going to repeat that to you. The wives and the sons of the prophets. Unto Elisha saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thy servant. Now she's saying this to Elisha. Thy servant is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. She's just reminding him that her husband was in prophet school. Okay, he worked hard under Elisha. So this man was not only a, a, a prophet, but he was also a priest. And the creditor has come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. That meant slaves. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in the house? Now that's very interesting because you see, when she answers him, she has absolutely nothing in the house but a cruise of oil. Come on. Uh -huh. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? How can I help you, lady? Come on. Tell me. What's in your house? Now, she had no idea whether Elisha knew she had oil or not because it's the only thing she had in her house. Nothing else. You know why she had nothing else in the house? She had already sold everything to pay the debt, to keep her sons in her home. And she said, Thine handmaiden hath not anything in the house. Everything has been sold or confiscated, is what I think happened. Save a pot of oil. And then verse 3 says, Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Right. Even empty vessels. Of course they're going to be empty. You're going to put something in them. Borrow not a few. Right. Get as many. That sounds like as many as I can. That's right. Now, when thou art come in, 
Thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. Mm -hmm. Something's going to happen to these precious boys that save it, that make it out of slavery. Right. They were almost bond children, but they were saved. And thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, thou shalt set aside that which is full. Now, she's thinking, this prophet's lost it. Mm. They throw the words around lately, Alzheimer's dementia. I'm sure she thought he had something wrong with him. Mm. Because that oil only had about that much in it. Right. Come on. Their oil did not flow freely where they came from. No. Okay? Right. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. So her boys went door to door or tent to tent, if you will, and collected all these vessels. Yes. And she poured out. Uh huh. She poured out. Amen. And it kept coming. Yes. Right. And the children, those two boys, were watching God perform a miracle, not just for mom, but God was performing a miracle for them. That's right. They were the ones afraid of being sold. And it came to pass when the vessels were full. That she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. In other words, I'm done. Give me another one. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. So when she went to pour again, down the road sometime, it wouldn't pour like it had just poured. Verse 7 tells us, then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt. And live thou and thy children of the rest. In other words, there was so much oil that came out of that cruise, it set her up and her sons to be taken care of. Right. Now that's a bunch of oil. Right. Huh? Yeah. That's like uh, when you drive through Illinois and you see those funny little things, they uh -huh. look like a bird, uh -huh. and they're pumping oil. Right. I mean, she just had it going. Right. She had it going, enough money to take care of her and her boys. That's right. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where she was a woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. She's going to be grateful for the rest of her life, isn't she? Amen. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. Put yourself in her shoes. Come on. I would go to a prophet. I would go to a preacher. I would do anything in my power. To save my child. That's right. I gotta tell you, from what I've seen with my husband's health and doctors, it's a whole lot better to trust Jesus. Amen. Yeah, uh-huh. It's a whole lot better. Amen. God uses doctors. I'm not saying don't go to a doctor. I'm not a Christian scientist. But I am saying that you will be okay because the master will touch you. Right. Well, what do you have in your house today, church? Brother uh, Ralph or Sister sister Pamela. Pamela, would you read, bring up Colossians chapter 3. That's Colossians chapter 3, 23 and 24. Thank you. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord yes. and not unto man. All right. Amen. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. And then Psalms 134.2. You need to mark that scripture and truly take it apart. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. Amen. Lift up your hands and bless the Lord. We are called to praise just like she was called to pour oil. It's so important that the Holy Spirit, which is the oil of gladness, that it remain in us. We know that a, a broken heart, a broken spirit, drieth the bones. That's what David said. Well, it's not just drying the bones. It means you're miserable. When they talk in the Bible about dry bones, they're miserable. Something terrible has happened. But when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you should receive the oil of gladness. Amen? Amen. 
And you can go back in the scriptures and look and look and look. Pull up the oil of gladness on your phone. Ask uh, Siri and she'll tell you all about it. She'll show you the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Oh, my friends. We are lucky. All right. I am blessed. Amen. I am so blessed. I came up in a home where my mother loved the Lord. Amen. Right. My mother was not perfect. But she loved God. Amen. All right. And she taught me. And before I ever arrived, my brother could say Gigi, which meant Jesus, which means he had to be 16 months when I arrived, and he could already say that. I don't know what else he said. But the training. There's a picture Trisha has on one of her desks. She had it here at the church for years. And it shows John Mark all ready to go out the door with a coat, and on his lap is a Bible. That Bible represents training. You need to have a Bible open in your home. Why? It symbolizes that you receive from the Word. Okay. Your Bible's closed. It's not going to do you any good. Right. I mean, you might like to look at it, but it's not going to do you any good. But when you open it, that's a different story. As we embark on the journey into this text, I want you to remember the miracle stories exist to teach us a lesson. And when we look at the face of the text that I read today, the story behind it is a bona fide miracle. Through the prophet Elisha, God did the impossible. He did something that couldn't be done. You see, God will multiply unto you blessings. Amen. In return, we offer him our services. He doesn't have a hand he did when he was walking the earth, but he doesn't have a hand to give you things. We are the hands of Christ. Mom, you are the hands of Christ. Your attitude in the kitchen. Amen. Your attitude in the grocery store. Your attitude as you walk through life is going to affect those kids. Amen? Amen. But if you teach them, and you raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord, God is going to reward you. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You say, well, I don't see it yet. God is able, and God will do it. Amen. He's not a liar. He will do that which he said he would do. Amen. The mother was able to save her children and provide for the future and the community. This word community, say it out loud, community. community. Because what I found has everything to do with the community. It's also noted that in this house, located in this house somewhere, we don't know where it was, she did it obviously, was a jar of oil. And as I was researching, I found that that jar of oil represented her son's legacy. And so she hid it. She put it away. <clears throat> did Elisha know? He probably did. He knew that the oil of the prophet was a legacy, and you kept it. It was how they worked. It's what they did right. when they prayed for you. Things were very different under the law. Come on. But that oil today represents the Holy Ghost. Okay. And the Lord expects you and I to pour it out. Right. Oh, how do I pour it out, sister? Everything that your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Amen. We don't all do the same thing. No one can do everything. That's impossible. But you know what God has called you to do. Amen? Amen. If God called you to be a singer, you'll sing. <clears throat> if God called you to be a plumber, Brother Jesus, <laughs> then you'll Amen. put the new stuff in. Amen. Right? If you've been called to be a cook, now, go to the talents. One had five. Do you remember the Amen. great guy that went off to a far country and he gave his servants one, five, and ten talents? We have one, five, and ten talent people. So, you might be a prophet, Brother Gary. You might be an evangelist, Brother Gary. <laughs> I'm just picking on you because it comes to mind. 
When you start looking at the gifts as they're multiplied unto you, the more you use them, the more he gives them. And that is the miracle of following Christ. He will use you in ways to let the holy oil, the Holy Spirit flow out of you. And we are poured out, if you will, for God, for Christ. Amen? Amen. The mother was able to save her children and provide. That's wonderful. She knew when she went in the house where it was. Nobody else knew, but she knew. And I think it was hard for her to give it up. This was what her husband was. This is all she had left, because the house is empty. You remember that. There's no keepsakes. She needed the money. Sometimes we need it. The, cr the creditors came, and they took everything. What do you have is a loaded question, Elisha. What do you want to know? The poor woman has nothing left in the house. Why are you asking her that? Elisha is letting the mother know that God has already seen her situation, and he is at work. You don't think about God being at work when you're not praying for something, Come on. but he is. Right. The mother already knew she sold all. That Elijah asked the question, is there something left in the house? Right. Oh, my friend, sell out. Give everything you have to find the pure gold of God. Amen. All that I have, I do with all my might, with all my strength. Why? Because I am a worker. When the text said it was a jar of oil, this jar, I found it in Exodus 30, if anybody wants to go home and research it. The original language made it clear that both the jar and the oil were special. The jar contained holy anointing oil. Well, what's the difference between oil and, and anointing oil? Somebody prayed over it. And in the Bible, it was sweetened with spices. And the recipe is in Exodus 30. If you want to mix up your own anointing oil, we'll pray over your oil. But to be used solely and exclusively, this oil was part of worship under the law. And if you were not a priest and you were not a prophet and you pulled that oil out of the house, that means this woman, she's not a priest, she's not a prophet, she's his wife. And if she uses it, it was punishable by death. Ouch. I was shocked when I read that. I mean, what if you want to pray for your kid, you know? I'm used to using oil. It's not the power in the oil. It's the fact that we obey the Lord and do it. Anoint someone with oil, right? Mm -hmm. But the anointing oil had spices in it. Being a widow and having nothing, she went away and she gets these jars. But it's interesting to me that she comes back. And when she comes back, okay, what next? What next? And then he says, go and sell the oil. How is this woman going to sell oil? <clears throat> Not everybody's going to want my oil. Who, I always wonder, who bought that oil? Well, you see, the priests and the prophets were not allowed to own property. You remember Judah encamped round about? Amen. The presence of the Lord was in front. When the presence of the Lord is there, I don't understand what this means, Lord. But if you look carefully, you will know that she does not bring out the oil easily. Only in her faith does she go back to Elisha and ask what's next. He said, now, go and sell the oil. Well, if she sells it, she will be lucky because everybody's going to know that it's anointing oil and I don't want cinnamon in my corn cake. Corn cake. You know, but hey. All I can tell you that this jar of anointing oil was the only legacy that she had. When I look at hands, when I remember hands, my dear grandmother, Zola, I loved her. I saw her hands every time in a mixing bowl. She had great big knuckles because she had arthritis. But I could identify her hands anywhere, anytime, any place. I knew every detail of her hands. And then she would take that hand 
She was always making homemade everything. And she gave me a roll of dough and a small kid's rolling pin. And I had fun all afternoon. You know, content. But she modeled much more than pie making for me. She modeled more than baking bread. She modeled more than homemade noodles. She modeled more than dumplings. She modeled prayer. And when she was on her knees, and you didn't get up in 10 minutes either, you stayed on your knees till they were done. Even if you're visiting and they adore you, you stay on your knees. Amen. Don't get up. Get back down there. But every time I heard her pray, I heard my name. Amen. Amen. Every time. Amen. Every time. David. Twyla. Oh, God, save them. Keep them. Use them for your glory. That's right. She was a prayer warrior. I've told you many times. You went to church with her and you opened the door. Out fell Zola. There would be no music of any kind, honey, and she would be shouting in the prayer room, having herself a good old time in the Lord. You see, the oil of gladness takes effect. And when you have the oil of gladness, it's like the healing balm of Gilead. It just does something within us that is a transformation and nothing like we have ever seen. Being married to a prophet and a priest, she is sensitive to the moving of the Spirit of God. I know this. All I have left is a jar. All you have left today, you need to surrender to the Lord. Good. And I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about your hands. If she did not give the Lord her hands, she couldn't have poured the oil. You see, today, what you need to do to save your children is bless the community around you. That's right. How could this woman bless the community? That you're going to love this. The priests, as I said earlier, don't own land, but they do live in their own community. They live on permission land because the Levites were not allowed to own land. And so they all lived in a community. Now, you and I know, and I'm not going to go into long history because this would drive you crazy, but yeah, flour, an ephah of flour, things came in for the priests to use. But that wasn't all that often. And so it was important that the priests get what they needed to live. Right. I believe in reading after researching this that this was the only lady that happened to have oil. So I think she took the jar right back to the person that they borrowed it from. Okay. And the same people that gave her an empty vessel received it full. My friend this morning, if you have an empty vessel and you give it to God, he will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit. And you, when you are empty, you come before God empty and you say, Lord, I surrender. I give you my anger. I give you my my attitude. I give you my 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 everything. Everything that Twilight doesn't need, I give it to you, Lord. And then you turn around and you give him all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And now you are full. Now, when you go back to your brothers and your sisters, your community of Levites, oh. Where did she get this much oil? But my friend, God had a plan yes, to indeed. save her children. Yeah. We have been bequeathed with something that is wonderful. It's called the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can you lay your finger on your legacy? Can you? Do you know where your legacy is today? When you go home, do you know where your Bible is? I would hope so. We are Christians. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should have it memorized, at least a whole lot of it. What do you have in your house today? I'm asking you, the church. Do you know where it is? Can you plug into the Holy Spirit quickly? Can you? 
Well, it's like um, plugging in a lamp. You plug into Jesus, the current begins to flow, and after the current begins to flow, you go into the spirit of prayer. Amen? Oh, I identify the jar of oil. I know where it is. We have to follow a strategy. Broken, empty vessels from the neighborhood. And God poured in the Holy Spirit. We have empty vessels all over this community. And they need us to pour in the oil of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. They have a legacy. The underlying Hebrew makes it clear that the vessels into which the oil was poured were ordinary vessels. They were just vessels. Something they used to hold stuff. Nothing supernatural. No trick magic. But she, oh, this one's full. And the boys took it. And they brought her a new one. And it continues to pour oil. <coughs> My friend, can I be honest with you? We don't have enough oil. Sister Pamela, yes, we need to pray. I told you I pray in my closet. It's the only place I can get alone. Sometimes I pray in my bathroom. But we have to be able to get into the oil. Amen. You hear me say this a lot, that we are laborers together. I don't know if I can walk down the aisle with this, but I'm going to give it a whirl. We are laborers together. What does that mean, Sister Twyla, that we are laborers together? It means that I am in your community. We are Levites. And we are laboring together. Uh, no. But, you know, some people like to garden. I might not be one of them, but I will do it. <laughs> Flower bed. But the Lord said if you will do what you ask, what you ask him to do, he will supply what is needed for you to bring forth fruit. Amen. He will multiply it unto you like that vessel. If I truly am going to do all that God has asked me, I've changed my mind, yeah. <laughs> you can grab them. If I'm going to do something for Christ, I had jolly better have the Holy Spirit, and I better be working the plan. The plan was to honor and do what the prophet said that I needed to do. Because if I don't do what the prophet said, my kids are going to be long gone. Oh, Amen. Do what the preacher said. Oh, I like that. Right? Amen. If I ask you to come and pray on Monday night, I want you to have this where you can see it. Because I'm going to be here on Monday night and we are going to have prayer meeting Monday night. But that's not church night, Sister Twyla. It's Thursday. Why do you want me to pray Monday night? Because we need more prayer, Sister Pamela. <laughs> we need more prayer. We need a whole lot more prayer. Now, women, we do work. I would love to tell you, men are, women are from Venus. Men are from Mars. That was a great book. I loved it. Hysterical, but I loved it. But isn't it important that we do something? Oh, I love that it matches. <laughs> it's important that we are working and doing all that needs to be done. I'm full of the Holy Ghost, and it's time stir up the oil. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Stir up the gift that is within you. Now, when I tell you to stir up the gift that is within you, shh, yeah, stir it up. Put on the gloves. Men aren't that smart. Why do our hands remain <laughs> soft and beautiful? Because we're smart. <laughs> the women are smart. We don't use raw hands in the garden. I don't. It's so important for you and I as we work outside the home because that's the community that we are in. But I have one more thing to show you. And it means it wasn't only important that she went out and she got in contact 
with the prophet. But she went back to get a little more instruction. If she had not been a good wife, there would have been no oil in that house, let me tell you. But she was, here we go again, brother. She was a good wife. She was a good wife. She was a great lady. Because she hid the wealth of her husband. Her only thing that mattered to her was her legacy of the priesthood. Let me tell you something. I embrace the legacy of the priesthood. I em embrace having a call of God in my life. We were taught from a young age that God will use you according to what you're willing to give. It's not enough to work in the community. You better be working in your own house. Yeah, there's some more up there. It's important. Yeah, pass it to your mama. It's important that we labor together. And only as we labor. Yeah. I don't know how I did that. I wish I had. Oops. Mm, I did. I don't know why that got tangled, but it did. <laughs> there we go. How? Yeah, will you get that loose for me? I'll be back. I've got something for you. I've got untangled one. My friends, I want you to remember today, it's not just about being outside and being an example in your community, but Mama's Oil, those kids saw us pray. Those kids saw us labor. Those kids see what you do. I will get to you. He has untangled. It's so important that we labor at home. The oil of the Holy Spirit, those mitts, those other mitts represent you at home. You're in the house. I was raised, I always thought it anyway, that a mother sets the mood for the home. Well, you know, Peter said it's better to dwell on the housetop than in the house with a brawling woman. Amen. So fighting with your wife must be painful. I don't know. I'm on the other end. <laughs> but what we do know is that we are God's people. Amen. We are the ones that set the spirit for our children in the home. Are we sweet? Are we kind? Do we teach them? Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means I'll never want for needs. Divine strategy. She had a stash. My friend, you have a stash of the Holy Ghost in here today. Will you take advantage of it? Will you use it? Will you go ahead and pull it out and let it flow in your home? If you allow it to flow at home, it will splash out into your community. Yes, Do you believe that? Amen. I know we live in America. And I don't know one of my neighbors. But I know lots of people in Illinois and other states. That's the way we live now, right? It's the internet. We talk to people from China. We talk to people in Cuba very frequently at my house. Wonder why. All joking aside. The oil needs to flow. Bring your vessels, not a few. When you come to the Lord, bring your vessel so that you may fill it up. The vessel of the oil has to be taken in the community. They are the empty souls that we are seeking that we may give something to the community. My friend, I have anointing oil. Brother Jesus, you have anointing oil. Brother Gary, you have the anointing oil. But you know what? Moms, you have anointing oil. Yes. Sister Debbie, you have anointing oil. Yes. Sister Anne, who received the Holy Ghost, you have anointing oil. Amen. Sister Jean, I 
have experienced your anointing oil. Amen. Christine, I was there when you received the Holy Ghost, Amen. and I saw the anointing oil as it came into your heart. Amen. Sister Trisha, you have anointing oil. Sister Yanni, you have anointing oil. Mary Luz, you have, usted tiene aceite, unción, right? Ungido, gracias. Ladies, you have anointing oil. Sister Brown, you have anointing oil and you cover your house with it. That means if I'm dwelling with somebody that's a sinner, I'm covering them with my oil. Yes. And I'm allowed to live with him. I found Jesus and I'm with him. And I'm allowed to stay with him. I just cover him in my blood of the Spirit. My friends, this morning as we seek God, the oil of gladness needs to run through us. The oil of gladness comes from the Holy Spirit. Every day when I get up, oh Jesus, I love you. What's your name, sister? Jenny. Jenny? Anointing oil is already there. I see it here. Amen. 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 Ladies, we have the anointing oil. It doesn't matter how we got it. <laughs> you see, we are laborers together. And as we labor together, my dear friends, in the house, out of the house, until he comes, he said, occupy until I come. We labor together in our community with the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Every time you garden with that tool, or if you do, think of your anointing oil. I want you to think about what you have and who you are. You are a child. You are a price, the Bible says above rubies. You are the handmaid of the Lord. Amen. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall be like him. Amen. For we shall see him as he is. We're going to see a whole lot more than Moses saw. Right. Yes. And in our new bodies, we'll shine like the noonday sun. In a city where the Lamb of Jesus Christ is the light. In that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where there cometh no night. I've got a mansion over there. And I'm free from toil and care. I'm going to the city where the Lamb is the light. But before I get there, I have to work. For the Lord. For the night cometh when no man can work. These are dark days in America. I never thought I'd live to say that. I worry about children and I pray for the children every day. God, keep them safe. Wrap their mind in the oil of the Holy Spirit that the things that they hear will not affect them. But if they come home to mama's oil, if they come home to the crews of the Holy Ghost being poured out in their home, they will be delivered. Do you hear me? Yeah. Right. They will be delivered. Amen. In my house as a child, dad got up at six o'clock. There's a lot of preachers and it was amazing when they ask you, who's bivocational? I think it was two thirds of us. Very few ministers in our district only get income from church, but that's okay. <laughs> my dad worked at a soda company, bro. That was his second job other than pastoring. 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm not an early person and everybody knows I'm not. Don't ask me to meet me before 10. <laughs> Dad was down there at 6 o'clock on his knees. He didn't scream in tongues. But he was praying his Bible was laid open and that has stayed with me for many, many, many years. He wasn't perfect. <laughs> Get that, okay? 
But he loved God with everything in him. He did. He made mistakes. But he found his way in the oil of gladness. I told you this before. The day he died, he was going into shock. And he spoke in tongues, and it sounded like literal thunder. I'd never heard him speak in tongues like that in my life. And just from the way he was speaking, I knew he was saying, I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming. Give me, just, here I am. Don't miss me. He took a 20-minute ride in an ambulance, and just as they came through St. Francis, he said goodbye to this world. I want to see him. I want to see the oil of gladness that was given to me. Right. I want to slap him on the back and say, thanks, Dad, right. that I had the privilege to know who you were so young. I had a hard time surrendering until I was about 15, 16, 15. But oh, what I know today is because I was taught, because I was trained in a home where a mother and a father would pray. I'm my mother as far as body timing. My girls saw me pray, but it was usually one, two in the morning and everybody's in bed. God, I don't want you to keep listening to my prayers. I want to get with God and I don't want to be distracted. I'm a nighttime prayer, but I'm wide awake. And I get a hold of the Lord. And they swear you would find my mother in the hallway upstairs where the banisters are. She would be out there to get alone. And it was warmer upstairs. And there she was at the banister, praying and her Bible out. That is how you let the oil flow in your house. They must see you pray. They must know that you pray. I know I have a congregation here that loves God already. But the oil of gladness, we don't live in the past. What's back there is back there. And it has nothing to do with where we are today. We are going to walk forward. And when I come out of my door, my front door, I'm going to go into the community. And I am going to have the oil of gladness. I might need one of those trowels to break up that ground, to get, even get into them. You've meant those, right? Sandy was one of those. It was so hard to get her. But I just kept at it. She still needs the Holy Ghost, Rosemary. But I know you're working on it. My friends, let the Spirit move this morning. Let it lift you. Can we close our eyes together? Can we let the Lord Take the spirit of the Holy Ghost and just immerse us in his spirit. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Can't you feel it this morning? He's here. Hallelujah. It's a sweet spirit. It's not a running the aisle. But it is one that fills up the vessel. If you're empty today, open your heart. The oil of the Holy Spirit is moving among us. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Let me lay aside every weight that so easily besets me. And let me come. Saturate me in the oil of the Holy Spirit. Can you stand with me today? Would you come? together as a body of Christ. Would you come? Make sure the front people move up so the other people can get in. That's okay. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Jesus, your name is great. Your name is great. I and my Father are one. When you've seen the Father, you've seen me. When you see me, you have seen the Father. One God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. 
is one. Oh, my friends today, let the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit begin to move and saturate your soul. You're going to go out of here and you're going to touch other lives. We're going to sell the oil back, huh? Oh, we're going to sell the oil of gladness. Close your eyes. Let's yield to the Spirit. Can we do that? Oh, let's love him. Plug into the Spirit that you feel like the lamp being put into the socket. Let the Spirit of the Lord come and fill you up to the top. This vessel can't hold anymore. It's full. This vessel can't hold anymore. It's full. Bring me the next vessel. This vessel is full. Bring me the next vessel. This vessel is full. Bring me the next vessel. Fill me, Lord. Oh, fill them, Lord. Overflowing with your spirit. Oh, let their hands know what needs to be done.